there were eight. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome here as we begin our third round of the chase for the championship here in Season 4 of the Ansari Hershey's Cup Series. We are getting set here for what will be chase race number 7, and this is basically the round of the chase that sets us up to finding out who the final four will be that will battle for the championship at the season finale at Auto Club. Today, we are here in the Irish Hills of Michigan, getting ready for 40 laps of racing. It's the first of three races here in this third round of the chase. Next week, we'll be heading to he Homestead Miami Speedway, and then our final elimination race to determine the final four would be at Talladega Super Speedway. But this is the first stop that these eight drivers that are still in the hunt for the championship have to try and conquer as they try and progress their way towards being even the hunt for the championship at Auto Club Speedway. One driver that came into this round locked in was the guy who picked up the win in the last race of round two last week, and that was, of course, Matt Haas going to victory lane for the second time this season at Zen Joltis. So he comes into today's race with a three-point advantage over the other seven drivers since they get three bonus points towards the round following which round they had their win in. So Matt Haas going to try and utilize that to his advantage, and he's rolling off from a pretty decent starting position today as well. Looks like he's going to start from the 13th position in that number 78. A couple of other chasers that I see they are starting somewhat close to the field. You got the entire third row comprised of Sean Galligan in fifth, JT Bryant there in sixth, and I see Charles Sanford not too far back. Looks like he's going to roll off somewhere around maybe the... Uh, 18th Driver, position in this one engines. as we're getting the command to fire him up to give you what your point stands look like coming into this race as far as those eight drivers Matt Haas obviously coming in as the points leader three points advantage over Anthony McCrory the season one champion Charles Sanford Sean Galligan Jake Baskinger Trent Dunham was the final driver to transfer into the Elite Eight as he just barely got in over Benjamin Miles by I think it was three points JT Bryant and Blaine Keyes are the eight drivers that are still in the hunt for the championship this season. Two drivers out of Seth Poe Baker Motorsports, two drivers out of Sega Motorsports, one driver out of Retro Racing Enterprises, one driver out of Furniture Row Racing, one driver out of AS Racing, as both his teammates are out now, that being Baskinger, and one driver out of Young Motorsports. We have one Toyota, we have three Chevrolets, and we have four, I'm sorry, three Fords, I should say, and four Chevrolets still in the hunt for this championship. So Jessica Shelton lines up on the pole for today's race, looking for her second win of the season. So far this season, Retro Racing Enterprises with four victories. Two from Kyle Matthews, one from Charles Samper, and one from Jessica Shelton. Tim Walsh alongside of her. Walsh trying to get himself into the uh, top 30 in the points, as is Leon Alvarez, as is Joseph Srigley. Those three starting up there on second through fourth. Then you've got the Chasers, Galligan and JT Bryant, Dylan Pote, or maybe James McLeod, rather, lining up there in... Uh, Seventh spot with Cole Baker there in eighth, Brandon Gonzalez and John Art, who was just recently eliminated from the chase last week. Complete your top 10, 11th place, Dylan Poach, another driver who was just recently eliminated from the championship as well. The other two drivers that were eliminated from the championship that will not have chase banners as well, the 25 of Benjamin Miles and the 48 of Cody Lama says, green flag is out, round number three of the chase is underway. Three stages here, of course, today, of course. Those stage points could be very important for those drivers in the Elite Eight. 15, 15, and 10 is the way it's going to be split up today. And there are four wide back there with Cody Lamas, Tim Walsh, Garrett Sidner, and others. I think they settled it out, but that was close. As up front, the battle is on for the lead. Leon Alvarez to the inside. That Chevy Impala going by the Chevrolet SS of Jessica Shelton. And his Aaron's Dream Machine will go to the race lead. Wow, Swrigley way up the hill there. He may have gotten the wall off of that corner. And that just backed up Tim Walsh and a number of others on that high side. Michigan is a very, very fast speedway. And if you don't know how to handle the speed, you're going to have a very rough day here in the Irish Hills. Battle on for second between teammates. Sean Galligan up top. Down low, Cole Baker. And Galligan gets the runoff turn two, so he'll hang on to second. 
Alvarez looking to join Dylan Poteet as a three-time winner this season. Even though Alvarez didn't make the change for the championship and he is outside of the top 30 in points, he does have two trips to victory lane so far this year. So looking for his third win of the season and that would uh, be the first time he's ever done that in his career. So far coming into this season, the only time that he had won a race was back in season two at Freeway, only was a single win in that season. So this is his first multi-win season and he would love to be able to continue to build on that. Obviously, too, as mentioned, he would love to be able to get himself into the top 30 in the points to be able to get a spot in the uh, as a charter next season. You look down there at the uh, the charter battle that's going on right now. Dylan Young is 30th in the point standings, but it's really close still for uh, who's trying to get into the top 30. Tim Walsh is 35th in the or 31st in the point standings, but he's only 13 points back from Dylan Young. And then 29 points back is Leon Alvarez. Zach Flickinger, he's 33rd in points. He's about uh, roughly 56 points out. And then you got Joseph Srigley, who's the only other driver mathematically eligible to try and get up there and get a chase or, or get a, a charter spot. He is uh, 73 points back from Dylan Young. As we have a change for the lead, Brandon Gonzalez going to the top spot. Here comes Cole Baker, and here comes last week's winner. Matt Haas in the 78. Now Matt Haas, let's think about last season, his rookie year. He had two wins that year, and he was one of the final four in his rookie season to battle for the championship. So he had a lot of experience where that's concerned, and he's put, put into good use one season later. Matt Haas could be one of the favorites heading into Auto Club, that is, if he makes it into the final four. And right now, it's looking like he's definitely en route to doing that. Another strong run here today at Michigan for that Furniture Road Toyota Camry. We saw a couple weeks ago at Lime Rock, Levi McIntyre snap an 80 race winless streak, stretching all the way back to season two. Well, out in front is Brandon Gonzalez, the Mitsubishi Lancer out of Gonzalez Motorsports, who also has not been to Victory Lane since season two. Went to Victory Lane at Texas, and right now, out in front, trying to snap what would be over an 80 race winless streak, I believe, for him. Long time since he's been able to be in victory lane. Good racer, but just has not been able to cut a break here this, this season. He's had some strong runs, too. I mean, Brandon Gonzalez coming into this race currently finds himself situated 24th in the point stage. So while it hasn't been a great season, it hasn't exactly been a miserable season either. Otherwise, he'd find himself down there trying to battle to stay inside the top 30 in points. Talked about Matt Haas working his way through the field. Here comes a guy that just barely by three points squeaked his way into the Elite Eight. Trent Dunham, he's now up inside the top 10, now trying to get into the top five, working his way by Garrett Sidner. Another driver also that's working his way up towards the front is Sean Galligan there in the 44 car, who aside from Matt Haas had maybe one of the strongest round two runs of any driver in of the Chasers. It was really uh, three drivers that stood out to me in that second round of the chase. Matt Haas obviously was one, Galligan being another, and the other one was Charles Sanford. All three of those drivers had a very consistent round two in the chase for the championship. This is an entirely new round as Trent Dunham now to the inside on Leon Alvarez for second place. Cody Lamas, you see them there, that blue and gray Lowe's Dodge Dart on the inside, right now to the inside of Matt Haas for fifth getting eliminated from the chase for the championship last week at Zen Joltis, but he's out there trying to still finish out the season as best he can, potentially with a victory. Trent Dunham's got a teammate coming up here as well. Now as McIntosh worked his way up to ninth last time by. I think he's now in eighth, now taking seventh from Cole Baker. Two-time winner last season, former chaser last season, and trying to get his way up here towards the front for his first win of the season as Trent Dunham goes to the race lead. Now this is very important for Trent Dunham because so far no chaser has been out in front and led a lap and so Trent Dunham would get a very valuable bonus point towards the chase for the championship if he can complete this lap out in front. Looks like he will do so because the battle is on for second between Brandon Gonzalez and Garrett Sidner. Very impressive too here at Michigan that we've been able to run a long green flag run was kind of expecting here being the first uh, race of the next round that we might see drivers try and make some dodgy moves, but that has not been the case. They've been racing three 
wide in several portions of this track and keeping it together. So kudos to these drivers putting on a show for the capacity crowd here at Michigan. Matt Haas may have gotten the wall there off of turn two, losing a lot of momentum. I think he ran a little too wide there through turns one and two, and he's going to pay the price. JT Bryant now trying to get by Matt Haas for position. Anthony Curry back there as well, along with Jake Baskinger. So there are a number of chase drivers that are still right there trying to crack their way into the top 10. One car back there that might be a little different to your sight. You're probably trying to figure out who that is as Brandon Gonzalez trying to get by Trent Dunham again. That is Brooke Allen running different colors for the remainder of the season. We see Tim Walsh get the wall and we nearly see the wreck. We do see a wreck. Just talking about Brooke Allen makes her spin out right in front of the field. And I think everybody's going to get by. Olive Garden sponsoring that number three. And as soon as I go back to talk about her, she spins out, gets involved in a wreck, and the caution is out for the first time here today at the Michigan International Speedway with Brandon Gonzalez leading us back to that caution flag. It's at times like these when, as a commentator, you wonder what would have happened if you were just going to keep your mouth shut. Well, Brooke Allen was running up just outside the top 10, debuting that new Olive Garden paint scheme on her Chevrolet. And just like that, brings out the first caution of the day. This will be very interesting because it's potential that we could either get back green flag racing on the completion of stage one, or we still could be under caution. And it looks like these drivers are gonna make pit stops. So this could be a very important pit stop for someone like Trent Dunham who will try and get off pit road first so that way he can win the first stage, get 10 valuable bonus points in the bank towards the chase for the championship. But we're gonna have to see what happens here. Is anybody gonna risk it and stay out? Almost doubt it. That long green flag run, everybody's gonna be screaming at their crew chief for fresh Goodyears. And here they come. So let's follow Brandon Gonzalez down the pit road. Gonzalez started the race about mid-pack, so he'll have a fairly early pit stall about midway down pit road. Trent Dunham the same there. He's just about back in the second half of the pit lane. And there's Brandon Gonzalez's pit stall right there. We're going to have to see about pole sitter Jessica Shelton. She's, uh, she was in, I think, ninth. When that caution came out, she's got that first pit stall after getting the pole position. So we'll have to see if that first pit stall helps at all. Garrett Sidner, little contact there with James McLeod coming off pit road, and he's going to come out the race leader, it looks like. Yes, he will. Garrett Sidner and his team, it looked like they went with fuel only, which is really a surprise. I thought everybody was going to be at least changing two tires, but Garrett Sidner will come off pit road as the leader. Joseph Srigley comes out behind him in second. Srigley, of course, with that runner-up finish last week at Zenjoltis. Matt Haas will come out now the highest chaser in third. And then the rest of the top five looks like will be Dylan Young and Trent Dunham. So we are under caution for the first time here today. Looks like a single car incident on the back straightaway. Let's take a look at a replay. And again, to my point, this was just outside the top ten. I think that it was around maybe the 13th, 14th position Brooke Allen was running at the time, and I think maybe she wasn't even the initial start of this wreck. Watch the National Guard Chevrolet of Tim Walsh up there on the high side. I think he may go a little too wide off the corner and get the wall. There you see right there, he comes down the racetrack into Brooke Allen. Allen then gets into McCurry, and then she comes back up into Tim Walsh. So she was basically a pinball there between the 15 and the 61. This happens right in front of JT Bryant, who does get a little contact, as does Sean Galligan. So two chasers got a little piece of that incident. Johnny Gardner in the 26 also with a little contact. And look at Dylan Poteet, Emmanuel Hartnett, Fitzwater just barely avoiding there as well. And I think, uh, whoa, that's the car. James McLeod comes flying in and just barely avoids as, as well. So don't know how much damage that might have caused to JT Bryant and Sean Galligan. We'll have to find out there. But we technically got away with a single car spin. But tough break there for rookie Brooke Allen. Put in a bit of a situation there and just couldn't get out of it without having her car all mangled up on the back end. Left side, right side. Tough break for the debuting scheme of Olive Garden 
on that Michael Norman Motorsports entry. So we haven't gotten the one in the green signal yet. We're probably going to get next time by, but I wanted to focus here at the rear of the field for this restart. There is Sean Galligan. He spent extra time on pit road. They worked on that right front quarter panel to make sure that he's going to be up to speed because, as we mentioned, Michigan very, very fast, so aerodynamics are super, super important. So he will restart close to the rear of the field. Another driver that caught a big break with that caution coming out was Blaine Keyes. He had lost the lead pack and was running near the rear of the field, so now he's back up in the pack. So a very timely caution for him and Sean Galligan obviously being able to get that work done under caution rather than under green flag conditions. We'll have the one to green signal next time by. It's going to be Garrett Sidner out in front, and we are going to give you a rundown of where your eight ch chasers will be restarting here when we will go back green, which we will actually be going back green at the completion of stage one. So that means Garrett Sidner will lead us to the green flag and the green and white checkered flags, and he will get 10 valuable bonus points towards the season points. It will not be towards the chase points since he is no longer in the chase after being eliminated in round one. But your highest starting chaser is going to be Matt Haas. He's going to roll off from third on this restart. Trent Dunham will be fifth. Jake Baskinger in sixth. And those are going to be the three chasers that will restart inside the top ten. Charles Sanfer will be rolling off from 11th place. JT Bryant in 16th. Note, the 22 team did not repair any damage to his car while he was on pit road, so we'll have to see if he is up to speed. And then the rest of your chase drivers, Anthony McCray rolls off 25th place, and as we saw, Sean Galligan starting near the rear of the field. He's going to be 33rd, Blaine Keys in 31st. All 35 cars that took the green flag to start this race will take the green flag here for our first restart of the day, so nobody back behind the wall after our first yellow flag waved. Garrett Sidner, he ended up picking up his first career win earlier on this season, looking to have a multi-win season now as he paces the field. And, you know, there's a lot of those drivers that have been eliminated from the chase not only back at Indianapolis but last week at Zen Joltis. I've talked to a number of them and they've said, you know, you know, it's obviously disappointing we've been eliminated from the chase, but it kind of takes a little bit of pressure off of us now because we can go out there, be aggressive now, and just finish out the season with as many wins as possible. We're not trying to keep ourselves out of trouble so that way we can make it into the next round of the chase. So a little bit of alleviated pressure for a number of those kind of drivers and I'm certain Garrett Sidner is one of those. Looking back here, we talked about Brandon Gonzalez, Dallas McIntosh trying to get their first wins of the season. Dylan Young in that two car. He's trying to end a winless streak. We, I thought Dylan Young last week was going to go to victory lane at Zen Joltis, but he couldn't make it on fuel. Gave up the race win to Matt Haas on the final lap of that race. So he's restarting right behind the 78. Maybe a little bit of retribution on his mind as the green flag will come back out here. And as you can see, when they cross the line, there is your stage one points. Very important points for Haas, Dunham, and Baskinger. Aaron Sidner did not get a good restart. So Wrigley went high, Matt Haas went low, and Sidner appears to not be up to speed. They're all bypassing him rather quickly. Not exactly certain what's up with the 38. Either he missed a shift or he is off the pace. Yeah, he's wadding up that outside line. Problems for Garrett Sinner's Dr. Pepper Chevrolet. Now, the only thing I can possibly think of was back when we had the pit stops, there was almost some contact between Sidner and I think it was James McLeod, but I don't think they did make contact, so I don't think it has anything to do with that. As Sidner now is slotted back into a spot behind JT Bryant, but I don't know if it was cold tires or what, but Sidner just did not get going, and he lost a lot of spots. Here comes Nathan Hudson on the bottom three wide, sticking a couple of chasers in the middle, or in the three wide situation, and they are almost four wide coming off the corner. Jake Baskinger, Trent Dunham maybe wanting to get out of Dodge. They are racing like crazy up here at the front. 
three wide, almost four wide, and now Hudson to the inside on Joseph Swigley as one car got the wall there a little bit. That was Dylan Young in the two. They keep it together though. Kind of slipping and sliding around here today. The Sun's been beaten on this racetrack and Dylan Young got the wall again. They're off two. Almost came down to into, into his young teammate, motorsports teammate, easy for me to say, JT Bryant. And here comes Brandon Gonzalez to the bottom. Nathan Hudson, another driver who hasn't been to victory lane since season two of Hershey's Cup Series competition when he picked up his first and only win as a rookie for Michael Norman Motorsports in the number seven at Lime Rock Raceway. So you think about it, he's pushing a 80 race winless streak. We were at Lime Rock a couple of weeks ago. I think he's got uh, two more races and he will be on an 80 race winless streak. Ooh, Hudson in the wall. Right in front of Matt Haas, but Nobody really to his inside crowding him, so they all get through turn two safely. Brandon Gonzalez out in front there, that car with the Pokeball wheel wells. And here comes Jessica Shelton, the pole sitter, back to the bottom, trying to get back to the race lead. Went three wide there with Leon Alvarez and Cody Lamas. Going to have to tuck back in line here. Couldn't quite get the run out of turn four. Down the front straightaway. Her teammate Kyle Matthews up here in the mix now there. That Kings Island Chevrolet. Two-time winner this season. Defending champion of this series. And right now up inside the top ten. Having a great run. Cody Lamas, we mentioned, just recently eliminated from the chase for the championship. Now up here. Cody Lamas has never had a multi season in his Hershey's Cup Series career. He picked up a victory back in, I think it was season one at M&M Super Speedway, his rookie season when he drove the number 20. He picked up a win last season, obviously, that got him into the chase for the championship, and he picked up a win this season at Springfield Mile. But he's only ever had three wins, all single wins, in a single season. He has never gone to victory lane more than once in a single season as Joseph Srigley got the wall. He almost hooked Cole Baker, and he almost got run over by Trent Dunham. Meanwhile, Brandon Gonzalez still showing the way. It's a couple more drivers that are popping themselves up into this top 10. How about Cat Tellier? Go back and remember that wreck that we saw that took place with uh, Brooke Allen. Well, Cat Tellier was one of the drivers like Blaine Keys who had lost the lead pack. Got the caution, got back up here in the field, and now she's up inside the top 10. Zach Flickinger there in the 74. We document, oh, trouble with Jessica Shelton. Up in an eighth and Hudson, this is gonna be a big wreck. Big wreck, Cole Baker's involved, Flickinger is in it. And how did we get away with only four cars involved? How did we get away with only four cars? Shelton, Flickinger, along with Cole Baker, and I believe the other car that was involved was Nathan Hudson. Caution is out for the second time today, just past the halfway point, and I still don't understand. It was off turn two. How did we not have more cars wrecked on the back straightaway? And that was a very odd wreck as well. I don't know if Shelton had prior contact, but her car went down to the apron and then came back up and got hooked up into the outside wall. And I still don't understand how we ended up having only four cars involved in that. But now this may give the drivers the opportunity to come to pit road and this may put them within their fuel window to make it the rest of the way if we do go green for the remainder of this race. Tough break there for number of drivers that were running right up inside the top 10 at the time. Shelton started on the pole, had been in the top 10 all day long. Cole Baker, Nathan Hudson, and Zach Flickinger had just made his appearance up inside the top 10. But I don't think any chase drivers got involved in that incident. So Brandon Gonzalez is gonna lead them all down pit road. And as I said, I'm pretty sure this is going to be the final pit stop these drivers are gonna to have to make here today at Michigan. We would probably restart somewhere with about 15 laps to go, and we didn't have our first caution until somewhere around lap 12, so I think they are going to be okay on fuel consumption and will not have to pit again before the checkered flag waves. So we'll see. Brandon Gonzalez, the last time he there was a caution out, he was out in front. 
But he didn't win the battle off pit road, and he may not win the battle off pit road this time. It's going to be close between him and Cody Lamas, and Lamas is going to edge him out. So Cody Lamas will come out with the race lead. So that's 0 for 2 for Brandon Gonzalez's team. Him coming down pit road as the race leader and coming out as the race leader. Last time he lost the race lead to Garrett Sidner on pit road, and this time he loses it to the Dodge Dart of Cody Lamas. So Lamas will lead us back to green flag over Brandon Gonzalez, Leon Alvarez, Kyle Matthews, and Tim Walsh. That'll be your top five as we'll go back now and look at a replay of what put us under the caution for the second time here today at Michigan. All right, we're going to follow this back going into turn one because Jessica Shelton's car was out of control in the middle of one and two. So something must have happened at that point. Is there going to be some contact between her and Nathan Hudson? Let's look and see if they lock bumpers. Oh, yeah. Hudson's going to get her right there just a bit in the left rear. Car goes slideways, and then when she hits the apron, it shoots her back up the track. She gets hooked again in the right rear by Hudson. And there you see, just sweeps up Cole Baker and Zach Flickinger in their wake. And look at this. Both, all four cars manage to stay way up on the high side. Normally at Michigan, the cars will slide back down the racetrack to the low side. And that's where we have a multi-car wreck. Look at everybody being able to get by. That is incredible that we only had four cars involved in that wreck. We should have had upwards to 12, maybe 15 cars involved. There should have probably been chase drivers involved in that wreck. And somehow, it's four cars only, and all four are non-chase drivers. That is unbelievable that we got away with one here at Michigan, especially in one of the worst spots to have a wreck, that exit off of turn number two, onto the back straightaway. But tough break there for Flickinger, Shelton, Baker, and Hudson, who at the time, as I mentioned, were all running up inside the top 10. And unlike our first caution of the day, this time all 35 drivers will not be coming to take the green flag for the restart. The four drivers you saw involved have all taken their cars back behind the wall. Cole Baker, Zach Flickinger, Jessica Shelton, and Nathan Hudson will not finish out today's event here at Michigan International Speedway. So 31 cars still running, and it will be JT Bryant, the highest starting chaser on this restart, as he'll roll off from seventh, Charles Sanford in 10th. Only two chasers restarting in the top 10 behind race leader Cody Lamas. Let's find out where the rest of our chasers are restarting. Trent Dunham will be rolling off 15th, 17th place for Matt Haas. Anthony McCurry in 24th, Blaine Keyes 26th, Sean Galligan in 27th, and Jake Baskinger back towards the rear of the field in 29th for the restart. Still quite a ways to go in this race though, so ample time for those drivers near the rear of the field to work their way back up to the front. When we go back green, there will be 14 laps to go. Hopefully we've seen our last caution of the day. We've had two really good long green flag runs and the racing has been unbelievable all the way through the field. And hopefully we're going to see one of those classic Michigan finishes here if we can go green the rest of the way. Also have four laps to go before the completion of our second stage. So still time for drivers like Bryant Sanford to maybe try and get their way up here to the front, get those 10 valuable bonus points for completing this stage as the green flag is back out. Talking about Kat Tellier up here at the front. How about her teammate Keith Batson restarting in the eighth position there, that Lincoln. Lincoln still looking for their first win of the season. Batson had a great run last week at Zenjoltis, and he's up here in the top 10 again here at Michigan. And they are three wide, two rows deep for the race lead. Llama stuck in the middle. They're going to go four wide as Chris Dodd sticks his nose to the inside. Alvarez way up high off of turn number four. He's in the wall. Off across the nose of Cody Llamas, and here we go. Kyle Matthews is spun. Cat Tellier's involved. Baskinger gets into it. And they're still wrecking up ahead. McLeod, Gardner, and there's Galligan involved further back. Poti gets a piece of it there with Brooke Allen. And just like that, our third caution of the day, and this time it involved chase drivers. There is Galligan. There is Baskinger. And it had nothing to do with the four-wide situation. Leon Alvarez went way wide out of turn four. 
and that's what caused it. He got the wall and came across the nose of Cody Lamas. There is Kyle Matthews, two-time winner this season. His day over. Cat Tellier got involved, McLeod got involved. Another car up here smoking, that's Emmanuel Hartnett in the 83. Johnny Gardner's got damage now. And just like that, our chase for the championship has taken a rather unexpected turn and we now are starting to see drivers that are gonna find themselves in a much more drastic situation heading into Homestead Miami Speedway. Hartnett's gonna come to the pit lane as does Gardner and Tellier. Nobody else coming to pit road, at least for the lead lap cars. Kyle Matthews there, there's Cody, there is Baskinger, as Galligan's already taken his Ford behind the wall. Can't say it yet, but that could potentially be his championship hopes done unless something really good happens to him at either Homestead or Dega in the upcoming weeks. So Brandon Gonzalez leads us again. He has an uncanny knack for being out in front when the caution comes out. This is the third caution that's come out and the third time that Brandon Gonzalez has led us back to the yellow flag. He may be the only person who hopes this race ends under caution. But we'll take a look at what happened to bring out the third caution of the day here, this time out of turn number four at Michigan. So we're going to have to look at this from two different angles because there was not only the initial wreck, but a wreck that happened further up as a result of drivers trying to avoid the first incident. You see there, look at how high Leon Alvarez is up the racetrack. There's no way he's going to make the corner without hitting the wall. And right there, he hits it where the wall juts out, comes down the racetrack, and it's right into Cody Lamas goes across the nose. Kyle Matthews gets hooked in the right rear. He's sent up the racetrack straight towards the outside wall. And look at everybody trying to split the gap to avoid. There's where Cat Tellier gets a piece of it in the 70. I think Hartnett makes contact with someone further up. And there's Baskinger in the 5. Nowhere to go. He goes to the apron, hopes that it's not going to be anybody there. But Leon Alvarez says, and here comes Sean Galligan. There's just smoke, and he's just going to try and drive his way through. And he clobbers Cody Lamas from behind. And then Cody slams into Kyle Matthews with that forward momentum. Man, hard lick there. I mean, for Galligan, it was positions he would pick up on track, so he wasn't going to lift. And there you see the 5 and the 44, two chasers involved in this one. Now, the other incident, I think, might have started potentially with Cat Tellier and Johnny Gardner. Let's see here. This is Gardner coming off of 4. They're already wrecking. And you're going to see on the left side of your screen, right there's the contact between Cat Tellier and Kyle Matthews. And then... Gardner's going to get into Matthews as well. That's what spins him around. Oh, oh wow, they really stacked up back there. Garrett Sinner, Zachary Fitzwater, Brooke Allen got some contact, and Levi McIntyre almost got forced up into the wall by the 76. Swrigley might have gotten a piece of that as well. And I don't rightly know, Hartnett is smoking. Who did he actually hit? I saw him make some slight contact with somebody, and that might have been what caused the mechanical problem for him. I'm not certain who it was, though. Was it... Oh, it was Leon Alvarez. You'll see it right here. Watches the 08. Spins up towards the outside wall, and right there is the contact with the left front. And that's what's going to send Hartnett out of this race. And watch the stack up behind here. I think Blaine Keith may get a little bit of contact into John Art, and there you see him stacking up. Brooke Allen slams into the back of Fitzwater. Sidner gets into the back of Fitzwater as well, and then Fitzwater goes up into McIntyre, and you saw McIntyre nearly get put into the outside wall. And back there on the top right, there's where Cody Lamas clobbers Kyle Matthews after getting clobbered by Sean Galligan. So that puts us under caution for the third time here today at Michigan. Let's go back to green. And as we are back, there you see the top 10 for the completion of our second stage. We will go back green on lap 32, and they just crossed the line completing lap 30. So Brandon Gonzalez with 10 valuable bonus points here this season, winning our second stage of the day. And as far as the chasers that are going to reap in the rewards of getting some stage points, Charles Sanford, you see him, he's going to get six points, or make that seven points rather. JT Bryant's going to be coming away with four points, and Trent Dunham with two. 
Matt Haas will be restarting 11th, just outside of getting stage points here. The rest of your chasers, let's see where they're going to restart. Anthony McCurry will be 15th for the restart. Blaine Keys in 18th. And then the other chasers are out of the race. Sean Galligan and Jake Baskinger. Baskinger will be scored 26th. Galligan will be scored in 31st. Other drivers out of the race after the incident. Leon Alvarez, Kyle Matthews, Kat Tellier, Cody Lamas, Johnny Gardner, and Emmanuel Hartnett, which gives us 23 cars still running. All 23 still on the lead lap for this restart, which will be with less than 10 to go. It will be nine to go when we go back to green flag racing. And not meaning anything against Brandon Gonzalez, but I'm hoping he stays out in front and wins this race instead of falling back and fighting his way back to the front because every time he fights his way back to the front to get the race lead that's when the caution seems to come out so we'll see what happens as Chris Dodd lines up second Keith Batson there in third so the top three all looking for their first win of the season two of them looking for their first wins in season two one looking for his first win of his career that being Keith Batson in the 39 as the green flag is back out here at Michigan Keep in mind as well, we are in the third round of the chase for the championship. So if a chaser wins here today, that is an automatic ticket into the final four at Auto Club. Same for next week at Homestead and the following week at Dega as Chris Dodd will go to the race lead. He hasn't been to victory lane since mid-Ohio back in season two, his championship season. And here comes Bats into the bottom there in that Lincoln. Tim Walsh as well, another driver looking for his first win of the season. Three wide for the race lead. Who's going to lead the lap? I think it might have been Batson. Does scoring agree? Yes, it does. And here comes Mr. Trent Dunham on the bottom and Anthony McCurry. We haven't talked about that 61 all day, and now he's up at the front when it matters most. Benjamin Miles. He's going for the race lead. Here comes Trent Dunham. They are three wide battling for the lead here in the closing stages at Michigan. It's time to amp it up. Oh, four wide, almost five wide off the corner. They are four wide. Walsh way up high. Don't wreck, please. Oh, there goes one car around. One car spins, two car spin. Sanfer, Dylan Young, Tim Walsh. Caution, I think. Yes, caution is out. That's a chaser in Charles Sanford. Tim Walsh and Dylan Young involved as well. Yellow flag out, and look who's up front. Trent Dunham out in front. McCrory right there in second place. We will get back green, but will it be with only two laps to go? Maybe a one-lap shootout? We'll see. Tough break there for Sanford. He was up in the top ten. He gets swept up in this. Didn't look like he really got any damage, though. As he, Tim Walsh, and Dylan Young all spun on the front straightaway. And again, another trouble spot on the track. And again, how did we get away with only a three-car incident? I don't understand it. But the caution's out for the fourth time here today. Cautions breeding cautions. And that caution came out when half the field was across the line, half the field wasn't. So it's good to, we got to wait for fifth to catch up here to fourth place Levi McIntyre, but the yellow flag is out again. Let's take a look and see what happened off of turn number four. And one car is coming to pit road based off the contact. That's Tim Walsh, so... But the other drivers involved are not coming to pit lane. Watch the 15 up on the high side there. Almost shades what we saw happen with Leon Alvarez. He gets the wall, comes down, and goes across the nose of Charles Sanford who then gets down into Dylan Young. But again, how were more cars not swept up into this one? And again, all three cars managed to stay down on the low side of the track rather than sweeping up, which typically happens at a track like this. And we get away with only three cars involved. Charles Sanford doesn't look like he got very much damage. Maybe a little bit of right front damage now after that little bit of contact with the two. He's going to be starting close to the rear of the field, though. That's going to be the thing I think that will hurt him the most, is he lost a ton of track position after that. Whoa! And Dylan Young nearly got clobbered by Brooke Allen in the three. But uh, we'll see if Sanford will be able to rebound here in the closing stages. We're going to have a shootout to finish it out here at Michigan. It will be three laps to go when we get the green flag once again, here at Michigan, the next flag will end the race, whether it be white or yellow. 
Trent Dunham out in front, showing the way. Anthony McCrary right there in second. Both these drivers know that a win here today locks them into the final four for the championship at Auto Club. Dallas McIntosh looking for his first win of the season. McIntyre and Miles looking for their second. Gonzalez looking for his first. Dylan Pote looking for his fourth. Matt Haas trying to get his way into the championship four as is Blaine Keys. They're eighth and ninth with John Arndt just trying to finish out what's been a career year for him. They're in tenth. The rest of your chase drivers, JT Bryant will restart in 12th. Charles Sanford back in 19th, so he didn't drop too terribly bad. And then the other two drivers we already mentioned out of the race. One driver out of the race after that incident, although it really didn't happen due to the wreck, but Dylan Young pulled down to the apron under the last lap of pacing, and he's out of the race due to brakes on that two car. That's the first time I think I've ever seen a car retire due to brakes. It's one of the few ones you normally don't see. That and uh, fire. Wheel's pretty unusual too. But here we go, three lap shootout to finish it out here at Michigan. It's been crazy so far, it's gonna get even crazier. Green flag back in the air. Can Trent Dunham hold him off for three more laps? I'll bet he's hoping for a caution to happen here on this lap maybe. The fans certainly don't want to see that, and I don't want to see that. I want to see what we're going to have here in the closing stages. I think we're in for a heck of a finish. Dunham with a big lead at the moment. McIntyre may have gotten the wall off too. He's starting to drift back. Battle may be on for second. Dallas McIntosh to the inside on Anthony McCurry. And this could get very interesting if McIntosh takes second, gets up to the back bumper of his teammate Trent Dunham. Is he going to try and win his first race this season and deny his teammate getting into the championship four? Well, he won't be able to make a choice. Here comes Dylan Young, one of the best in the business this season. He's going to go to second place. And not too far behind him comes the 78 of Matt Haas. Two laps to go. Trent Dunham hanging on for all he's worth. He's hoping the best battle on track is going to be for second. Dylan Young, now to, or make that Dylan Pote to the inside of McIntosh, who's going to get the wall. Here comes McCurry to the inside for the third position. Pote now clears them all. He's going to try. Problems! Trent Dunham! He's coming to pit road! Dunham's waving his hand out the left side. He's coming to pit road, as is Matt Haas. They can't make it on fuel. It's that close, Poteet out in front as the white flag is displayed. One lap to go, Dylan Poteet looking for his fourth win of the season. JT Bryant couldn't make it on fuel. He was on pit road a lap ago. Down the back straightaway, Poteet out in front. McIntyre looking for second off of McIntosh, can't make the move. And through turns three and four. Oh, look out! Pokey's coming to pit road, I think! Or is he? No! McIntyre did the slide job on McIntosh! He'll take second as Pote will pick up his fourth win of the season. Checkered flag, Dylan Poteet wins at Michigan. What a crazy last couple of laps! And Dylan Poteet, who last week was eliminated from the chase, Gets his fourth win of the season here today at Michigan. That ties him with Charles Sanford for most wins in a single season with four. Sanford had four wins back in season two. And Poteet, one week after being eliminated from the chase, goes to victory lane once again here in season four. But how crazy was that? I saw at least three drivers come to pit row, three chasers who couldn't make it on fuel. Trent Dunham, JT Bryant, and Matt Haas. It looks like the only drivers that made it to the line on fuel of the chase drivers, Anthony McCurry, who's gonna get fourth, and Blaine Keys, who will finish it out in ninth. And Dylan Pote, right place, right time, picks up his fourth win of the season. And had he been in the chase, that would have locked him into the final four, but one week too late for the 31 car. 
Levi McIntyre will bring it home in second. He was close to picking up his second win of the season. That move he made, that dive bomb on Dallas McIntosh, it was really confusing because McIntosh was trying to come to pit road, and I thought McIntyre was out of fuel, but he was just trying to get around the 14. Normally, it's conventional to go to the outside of a car that's indicating they're pitting, but McIntyre wanted to get second place, kind of put a slide job on both Dallas McIntosh and Brandon Gonzalez to get the runner-up spot. Gonzalez, who had... One of the strongest cars all day. He'll get third, and Anthony McCray will be the highest finishing chaser here today in the fourth position. Great run for the Season 1 champion, and the Season 2 champion brings it home fifth. Great run for Chris Dodd. Joseph Srigley, that's his second straight top ten finish in two weeks. He'll get sixth. Benjamin Miles brings it home in seventh. How about John Arndt? He was at the rear of the field for pretty much a lot of this race, just kind of stayed out of trouble, and he fights his way through the field in the closing stages to get eighth. Blaine Keys. He's going to get ninth here today, so this will put both him and McCurry in a good spot heading into Homestead. And James McLeod is going to put both the Tweenix cars in the top 10 here today with a 10th place finish. Look at some of these drivers we haven't talked about at all today as well. Joshua Michaels will finish in 12th, or make that, or, yeah, in 12th. Caitlin Sang ahead of him in 11th. Zachary Fitzwater, 13th. Tim Walsh, we saw him spin out to bring out our last caution. He's going to come home in 14th. Brooke Allen brought out our first caution. She finishes in 15th. Then it's Garrett Sinner, Dallas McIntosh, Trent Dunham, Keith Batson, and Matt Haas. Those were the last cars to finish on the lead lap. JT Bryant and Charles Sanford both couldn't make it on fuel. They'll finish a lap down in 21st and 22nd, and then everybody else finished out of the race. Dylan Young, Emmanuel Hartnett, Johnny Gardner, Chaser Jake Baskinger, 26th, Cody Lamas, Cat Tellier, along with Kyle Matthews, Leon Alvarez, Chaser, Sean Galgan, 31st, and then Cole Baker, Zach Flickinger, Jessica Shelton, and Nathan Hudson. So right now, it would be, uh, I believe, JT Bryant, Charles Sanford, Jake Baskinger, and Sean Galligan in those critical spots in the point standings of 5th through 8th. Right now, your top four would be McCrory, Keys. Uh, Dunham and Haas, I do believe. Wow. We're going to have to see what they do at Homestead, though, and Talladega. The points, I think, are still going to be pretty close, though, amongst at least the top six. So we'll see what happens in the upcoming two races of this round of the Chase for the Championship. But congratulations to Dylan Pote. Can he make history? He's got three more races to get one more victory, and he will be the most winningest driver in a single season with five wins, making an NSRA record. We'll have to see if he is going to be able to do that or not. He's up to four, one away from beating Charles Sanford's record in Season 2. Thank you all for tuning in to today's race for Michigan, though. What a finish. What a race overall. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, and come part of the crew today. We've shown you full fish results, and up next, it's your rookie points, your overall points, and your championship points heading into a track that normally for most series is the championship race, but not here in the SRA. We're going to Homestead Miami Speedway, so hope you'll tune in for that. We will only have uh, Hershey's Cup Series action coming your way from that track before all three series will be taking to Talladega Super Speedway the following week. So again, we'll see you guys next time as you've been watching production of Offline Racing at its best so long from Michigan.